everybody and welcome. My name is Hunter Newby and we're at the Voice Peering Forum in San Francisco. It's June 2008. I'm joined by Mr. Jim Castagna of Horizon. Jim, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Hunter. Tell us a little bit about what you do at Horizon. I work for Verizon Technology, doing standards and regulatory support, and also representing the company at public policy and technical committees. And um, I've been doing that for 15 years. Previously, I was in network engineering, and also switched services and finance and controllers. So I very much enjoy what I'm doing for Verizon. After 25 years, I'm pretty satisfied with my career. You know a lot about Verizon being in the working, I suppose. Well, not as much as I hope to ever uh, understand about uh, Verizon, but certainly I know um, a lot about what's going on and what has happened in the industry. But certainly it's uh, very difficult to know everything about your company, especially with a company as big as Verizon. Yeah, Verizon is certainly huge. So, specifically on the, the interconnection side, and I know that's a term that's used a lot, so particularly in your world, it could have multiple meanings. I want to focus on interconnection as it relates to voice interconnection and network interconnection because we're at the voice peering forum for the voice peering fabric and that's an interconnection network essentially uh, for voice over IP specifically. Um, so you know it's interesting to, to see the developments of the voice peering fabric over the last five years now mm -hmm. uh, and the growth to the half number of members it has and how much traffic it carries for voice specifically. Uh, the members that participate in the media that are really building the community you know, they're the members and they are creating the community and use you know, that they put over the fabric. Uh, is what they're doing the trend that you see uh, at the higher levels of the larger you know, incumbent carriers like a Verizon? Uh, is, is that type of voice over IP interconnection uh, ultimately the way that all VOIP networks are going to connect? Uh, well, yeah. So, just maybe you can touch on that. Yeah, not, not, not. It's not the ultimate solution, but it's part of um, the total solution. Mm -hmm. um, what you're going to see is uh, more of an organic uh, consortium, uh, like the BPF and other uh, consortiums, develop and evolve over time. Some are trying to deal with um, the technical aspects, where others are offering uh, a total interconnection solution, which includes. Um, uh, billing and other uh, types of support mechanisms, which makes it like hands off for the carrier. You just you know sign one agreement and you interconnect uh, with the hub and you're there. Um, others are you know just providing a particular registry service or an enum capability where you can use it for uh, routing, but you know your commercial agreements and all that other uh, business relationship is still part of what you need to do. Uh, which makes it very difficult, um, you know, since bilaterals uh, with thousands of telecommunication companies, um, there's even 700 you know, wireless companies around the world, would make it difficult for a new uh, entrant to really get into the business because of all the paperwork and all the management and overhead that goes along with that right. uh, business aspect. So, um, you know, the VPF offers an opportunity uh, for these companies to enter the market and also, it's a, uh, a step towards what you would call next generation interconnection, which is where you have these federations and consortiums that are going to mature and they'll find their place in the market and then they'll eventually interconnect. And that's something that you know, the telecommunications industry is working on is to figure out you know, what is the tipping point and how do we interconnect all of these uh, federations in the future when it becomes appropriate and necessary. Wow. So, I mean, you said a lot, and that was great. So, interconnection is very challenging for someone, not just in the network sense, but in the paperwork sense. Oh, yes. To actually just get into the business. And, for example, wireless, like you stated, 700 interconnection agreements. And then trying to sort out where those interconnections can actually happen. So, if you look at it in the context of the fabric, at least from the network sense, the layer two VLAN interconnection sense, when you're connected to the fabric, you have access to those other parts. Right. So from a provisioning sense, yes. it's that much more accelerated. Right. But bilaterally speaking, whether it's wireline or wireless, there's still a relationship that you need to establish with terms and conditions and payment and billing and settlement and, and protocols and other things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's the difference in the models. Right. So you could go for um, a full solution hub provider where uh, you just sign an agreement, you meet certain requirements, technical requirements, and business requirements, right. and all the settlements are done for you. Turn then, yeah, then there's another solution, uh, and that's probably the GSMA solution, uh, what, what their model represents. Then you have other approaches like the CC1 Enum LLC, mm -hmm. where you provide a utility uh, for signaling Enum capability, and then everything that happens between companies are commercial agreements, right. potentially. Uh, we haven't seen you know, what that full model is going to look like, 
Um, and then there are certain models like the BPF where you have an option. Uh, you could do bilateral, you could do multilateral, um, you could use different services, mm -hmm. um, whatever it is that your company needs to be successful. So the VPF has a place in the industry. The participants and the members of the VPF are moving in the right direction along with the rest of the industry. And eventually we'll all meet and be able to communicate effectively um, when the time is right. And right. we don't know when that time is going to be. I think we've all assumed that it's going to be soon. And every two years we look and say, okay, it's going to be soon. <laughs> right. Every two years we look. But it's going to happen yeah. and it will happen uh, to the better of the uh, industry and to the benefit of the uh, consumer as well. Fantastic. Well, I, I agree with you. I'm one of those people who always thinks it's going to be tomorrow and it's usually not. It's two years away. <laughs> anyway, listen, it's been great chatting with you. Thanks a lot for joining us. You're welcome, Roger. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Good seeing you.